Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you a collection of demonstration files that I've created with the purpose of displaying character concepts. Each of these demonstration files follows a different style and purpose, and I've also taken some inspiration from one of my favourite artists. Before we jump into it, you can download all of the demo blend files for free from the link in the description. Just enter a zero in the price field or a higher number if you want to leave me a tip. The demonstration files share a lot of the same principles regarding object and background nodes, so tips and tricks I show in one demo should be transferable to the other ones as well. We'll start off by jumping into demo number one. It's a very comic book style with a high degree of vibrancy. Most of the surface area of the characters is well lit, and there is a lot of control over the colour, both in regards to the surface materials and the scene lighting. Changing the left area light will change the highlighting colour on the left side of the body, and the same goes for the light source on the right. They are placed at different angles to help get some mild shadowing, made really subtle by having soft shadows enabled in the render settings. Due to the volumetric world lighting, the colour from the surrounding lights will bleed over the background. A point light is suspended behind the character to light up that specific part of the light catcher behind them. You can easily change the colour of this light to set the mood, however the surface colour of the light catcher will mix with it. If you want to change the surface colour and the texture properties, then you can find the appropriate controls in the object material nodes. A tip with the light catcher material is that if you change the factor value of the multiply node that plugs into the base colour, then you can change the influence that the point light has on the surface without actually changing the light intensity. This is useful if you don't want any excess light bleeding onto the character. If you modify this value, you can make the effect as strong or as subtle as you like. The background texture is comprised of a wave and a musgrave generated texture. The musgrave is to provide areas of inconsistency, and you can change the balance between the two by changing the multiply values respectively. I will also note that all of the external textures used on these demo files comes pre-packaged inside of the blend files, so you shouldn't have to worry about plugging anything in manually. This includes the body textures for the character, as well as the HDRI for the world background, which can be seen in the reflection of the visor. The HDRI comes from HDRI Haven, which is an incredible resource of freely available backgrounds. It's kept alive by a generous Patreon community. Each of these demo blend files also contains the rigged base character, so you can pose them however you like and experiment with new lighting setups. Now let's take a look at the second demo file. This one is quite special because I wanted to set myself the challenge of replicating the style of Pascal Blanchet who is one of my favourite artists. I'll show you a couple of reference images of their work on the screen now. As you can see they have an interesting hybrid vibrant vintage style that makes use of strong colours and kit bash elements. I decided to try and replicate this style, however I needed to hold back on the kit bashing for these demos as it would push the sizes of the files past Gumroad's free product limits. You have a lot of control over every element of style in this demo, so I'll run you through some of the important points now. The variation of colour on the background circle can be easily controlled with the noise texture node and the colour ramp handles in the material nodes. There is a second noise and colour ramp combination with the handles at different locations to get a darkening effect around the original discoloration. In Pascal's work you can sometimes notice a colourised ambient occlusion effect, so this was added alongside some bumpy surface imperfections to the material nodes of the detail objects. If you take a look at the nodes, you'll see that it's a really simple setup, and it's the same effect that was used for the ground colour variation in my stylistic alien environments video. Here you can use the handles to control the colour and intensity. This AO effect was also added on top of the character textures, so we can get areas of discoloration where there are overlaps with other objects. Take the pole for example, as I change the colour of the leftmost handle of the body, we can have it add to the texture information below. The lighting setup is simpler than the previous demo. There are two main lights acting on the character, one from above and one from the left, which is coming from the direction that the character is facing. You may notice that there's a general yellowish ambience acting on the scene, and this is due to the world volume having a colour tint applied to it. Modifying this in the world nodes is a good way to adjust the mood. If we take a look inside of the compositor nodes, you'll see a setup for giving us complete control over the colours in the final render. We can increase and decrease different colour bands, which is useful for prototyping different palettes for this specific style. Now just to quickly demonstrate how to take this a step further, you can take the render result and modify it in any way you like with the help of an image editor. If I take it into Affinity Designer, I can quickly apply a border to the image and overlay a grunge texture to get a more vintage effect. In this case I'm using the hard light blend mode, and I can control the influence of it with the opacity of the layer. I can also recolor the grunge to get some colorized texture based imperfections. Now let's move on to demo 3. This one is simple in design, intended to be dark and dramatic. There are four sources of light acting on the character, with the primary purpose of highlighting the outer areas of the object or leaving some of the inner mesh darkened. This is because for visual satisfaction and intrigue, what you can't see is just as important as what you can see, so an effective use of darkness is always good for showing off interesting silhouettes. 
This is in stark contrast to the first demo, which was purposely aimed at being well lit on every side of the character. Notice that for one corner of the lighting there is a colour highlight. This is definitely a case of less is more in regards to colour. Combining this with reflective surface elements can get this really striking effect that draws the eye. You can really tell that this demo is based a lot more around showing off interesting points of focus rather than every minute detail. If your character has a signature weapon or armor piece, then this is an effective lighting template to use. If you're interested in lighting, I encourage you to download the files and experiment with creating new layouts for yourself. As we move on to demo 4, you can tell that we're moving further and further away from colorful styles. This is a full body show of the previous demo with a more faded background, and only white lighting acting on the character. There is the same number of lights, and they are in roughly the same position, if not further away from the subject. This is quite a fun demo to move the lights around and experiment with specularity. Moving on from this, I thought the natural progression from here was to go for the opposite of a dark lighting template and do something really bright. So here we are, a bright version of the template with the character in a slightly different pose. This one works really well for reflective curved surfaces with a conservative use of coloured accents. Unlike the dark dramatic demonstrations, this one is good for letting the character model speak for itself. And unlike the first demo, there are no oversaturated distractions behind the character to draw the attention away. So that does it for the demonstration content. Remember, all of these files are available for you to download for free from the link in the description. All you need to do is enter zero in the prize field or enter a higher number if you feel like leaving me a tip. Have fun with the content, play around, try using them to display your own characters, and make sure to tag me in your work so I can see what you come up with. I also want to say thank you to everyone for helping us pass 20,000 subscribers. I'm really happy to see how this community has grown. It's been really, really fun interacting with a lot of you, and I've enjoyed seeing all the things you've been able to make with the content. To celebrate this milestone, I've been planning on doing a Q&A video soon, so if there are any questions you would like to ask and want a chance to be featured in a future video, then feel free to put your questions in the comments below. They don't necessarily have to be related to Blender or my work, just be creative with them. The more interesting the question, the more likely it is to be featured. If you do ask a question, feel free to also leave a link to your portfolio site, Instagram or Twitter. I might show it in the video alongside the question. Remember, you can follow me on social media or join our Discord server to stay up to date on content. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. So thanks for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.